going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be installing this charge cooler from Active Auto Work on my F80 M3 today. give a massive shout out to Active Auto Work for sending out this cooling package. As you guys know, my channel is built around Active Auto Work products. My full exhaust from the downpipes all the way down to the Mad Max exhaust is from Active Auto Work. So I've been a huge supporter of them for a long time, but they have also helped me on my build and my journey as well. So I greatly appreciate them. I will actually be at their booth at Beamer Invasion coming up in a few weeks. So you guys will see the F80 there and you guys will probably catch me there as well. So I can't wait for that. I hope to see all of you guys there, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys drop a like, comment down below, subscribe for future content, follow me on Instagram, follow Active Auto Work on Instagram. And now let's get into this video. We got Kona Sita back on the channel. She thinks the charge cooler from Active Auto Work is freaking beautiful. This thing is a work of art. It's CNC machined, and as you guys can see, it's hydro dipped in carbon fiber. I mean, look at that gloss and shine. This is gonna be like my real first engine bay mod, if you would count it. Add a little bling to the engine bay when you open the hood, which I plan on doing at Beamer Invasion. So you guys will be seeing this beautiful charge cooler at Beamer Invasion with the hood pop because we have a couple other you know, engine bay mods coming in before then. But I also wanted to show you guys what else Active sent out in the cooling package or their cooling kit. It also comes with some silicone charge pipes and their heat exchanger, which we will be installing at a later date, of course. Again, more high quality products. And then in the charge cooler box, they also sent out some hardware for today's install. Uh, this fitting right here, which I think goes on the charge cooler. And then they also sent out the uh, J pipe, which is the cold side to the charge pipes that goes to the throttle body. And then this beautiful piece of machinery right here, <laughs> which we will be installing today. So yeah, this should be a pretty straightforward install. It's nothing too difficult or tricky. The only thing that you have to worry about is the coolant. Obviously, we're gonna have to drain the coolant or empty the coolant from the charge cooler itself. And there's a few ways you can do that. If you have a battery tender and a pump, you can do that. Or I've seen like Tommy L Garage and Brian from Keys Motorsports kind of do it a more manual way. So we're gonna try to do it that way, as DIY friendly as we can. And then yeah, all we have to do really is pop up the engine cover and then loosen the J pipe side, which is hidden down there with a couple connections. And then the hot side of the charge pipes right here. And then the OEM charge cooler is just held in by a couple grommets. So that should pop out pretty easily. But before we do any of this, you guys wanna make sure your car is cooled down because your coolant will be hot if you just drove your car. So make sure your car is cool before you guys get started on this. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is put a couple microfibers underneath just in case any coolant escapes. So this is the outlet for your coolant and this is the inlet. Right now we wanna take a little pick tool, take off the little quick disconnect bracket and wiggle this off. Be very careful because as you guys can see here, there is coolant right there. You wanna undo this clip. And right here I have a little gallon jug that I cut the top off of. And then we're gonna feed this hose into that end, making sure any extra coolant, you know, doesn't fall out. And this is what that's gonna look like. Next, we need to get the rest of the coolant out of the charge cooler into this jug. I saw Tommy L Garage. He actually blew on this inlet right here with his mouth and he actually funneled the rest of the coolant into this gallon container right here. Instead of just like putting my mouth on that cause that's disgusting with coolant. <laughs> I actually took the hose from my shop back, cleaned it out and then put it like this, like so. And then on the other end, your boy blew into it. That's what she said. <laughs> and then look how much coolant we actually got out. It's probably about a half a gallon or so. So that's a technique that you guys can try if you guys don't want to actually like flush the whole system from underneath. Uh, this actually worked <laughs> exceptionally well and I didn't have to put my mouth over here. So again, this method is as DIY friendly at home <laughs> as you can get. So now that most of the coolant is drained from the charge cooler, we can start disconnecting uh, the charge pipes from the hot side and then the cold side over here, the J pipe. Just want to get it loose so that way we can lift the charge cooler up from the grommets. Next, you wanna take your pick tool and again, disconnect this little piping right here that goes to the outlet. And look at that, no coolant is dripping. And then you wanna do the same for this big guy right here. And look at that, no coolant is dripping. Bada bing, bada boom. Next, we're gonna take a little eight millimeter, loosen up the charge pipe clamp. Next, there's a little sensor on the back right here. You just wanna take a little pick tool, pry that back 
and then snap it down. All right, next thing you wanna do is take a little pick tool and just kinda shove it in between the silicone and where your charge pipe connects to your charge cooler. And that gave me enough leverage to disconnect the charge pipes right here from the charge cooler. And similar to the other side, I took the pick tool and kind of lodged it in between the silicone coupler on the J pipe. And that allowed me, you know, enough leverage to lift the charge cooler out of the J pipe. So now everything's pretty much loosened up. The only thing holding in the charge cooler now is a couple of rubber grommets underneath. The next thing that I did was I just pried this side up here, the left side up from the rubber grommets. And then you, there's a little hose you wanna disconnect right here. And then you should be able to lift this entire unit out of both sides of the charge pipe. There we go. What's up guys, just wanted to interrupt today's video to bring you guys a message from a company that I just partnered up with and that's AD Digital Solutions. So AD Digital Solutions sent out this amazing carbon fiber, you know, backpack that has, you know, the BMW logo and the M stitching right here. And the difference between AD Digital Solutions and other brands and companies that you see online is that they are officially licensed by BMW of Germany to use the BMW name and insignia on their product. So all the other ones that you see online are just knockoffs. And as you guys can see right here, the attention to detail is amazing. I absolutely love this. It's gonna be my new camera bag, my new travel bag. They also have two other designs that you guys can check out on their website as well. And right here, they also sent me out these dope BMW M AirPod cases for me and my fiance. My fiance actually took the carbon fiber one, and then this is the one that I'm using right now. Absolutely love these things. I mean, you guys can see the attention to detail. They not only do BMW products, they have other car manufacturers as well. So they have a bunch of bags, accessories, phone cases, wallets, and stuff like that. So make sure you guys do me a favor, check them out. Right now, they're doing a special deal for you guys right now watching. If you guys buy a backpack, you'll get 50% off an AirPod case just like this or a phone case of your choosing. So make sure you guys check them out. It'll be the first link in the description below. You guys will probably see me rocking this at BMW Invasion. But anyways, let's get back into this video. Luca came to help out, that boy Aston. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys a comparison of the two charge coolers now that they're out of the car. The OEM one is built with plastic components inside and out, and then the Active Auto Work charge cooler is built with, you know, aluminum inside and out. So this design is more reliable. You know, plastic is prone to cracking and higher mileage S55s are known for, you know, coolant leaking through to the throttle body and the engine. But with Active's aluminum core, this should allow more airflow and is obviously more reliable. And of course, it looks beautiful as well. I also took off my carbon strut brace to make it easier to remove the J-pipe clamps. I just moved this little reservoir out of the way, made my job a little easier, but you guys don't have to do that. But I just wanted to tell you guys like how, you know, the cooling works on the S55s, you know, hot air goes to the front of the car through the intakes through the turbos out through the charge pipes which is the hot side and then it goes in to the charge cooler whether it be the OEM one you have the active one that I'm installing there's also CSF and Mishimoto uh, they all pretty much do the same functionality which is cool the air more which goes into the cold side which is a J pipe into the throttle body and then back into the engine which produces you know more efficient power more clean power you know these engines love cooler weather of course boost season Everybody knows that, so that's pretty much how everything works. And like I said before, the OEM one has like plastic components in it, and the aftermarket ones are all built out of aluminum. And in theory, that should produce, you know, more airflow, which produces cooler air going into the engine. So all we have to do now is transfer over all the OEM components to the new Active Auto Work charge cooler. You guys wanna make sure that you don't reuse the hardware that comes with the uh, OEM charge cooler, because again, this one is aluminum, so you guys wanna make sure you use the hardware that the company provides. There's a couple brackets underneath where the rubber grommets sit onto the throttle body and that's held in by a few t30s right here and then there's a few of these like pinch little clips that you need to like kind of press in with the pliers just in case you need to get any of these hoses off this is a five allen key by the way on the top side you guys want to take your t30 take out the sensor and transfer that over to the active one of course i think this is a size four allen head just like so and then i already transferred over the reservoir as well held in by these two and then all that's left is to connect the coolant reservoir back to the charge cooler and obviously you guys see the oem mounting point would be right here but active provides this little u-shaped bend hose to connect the two sides and then yeah we should be able to install in reverse order and button her up let's go and just like that the active hose connector right here is all buttoned in this thing is on solid and goes on perfectly so great design by them and right there you guys can see the aluminum core so again this is definitely you know better quality better built than the oem one because it has plastic components which again should cause for more airflow all right so all you guys have to do now is reinstall in reverse order make sure all the connections are tight 
everything's seated onto the grommets correctly. Make sure none of the hoses right here are pinched. And then we're just gonna connect everything back together. We're gonna refill the coolant and then we're gonna reset everything on the car's computer. So we'll catch up with you guys when we're doing that. All right, so everything is buttoned up. Make sure you guys check all the hoses and the clamps. Make sure nothing's loose. Make sure your charge pipes are good, your J-pipe. All we have left to do is put on our engine cover and then we're gonna top off the coolant reservoir right here. Again, you wanna make sure that you mix this BMW coolant right here, antifreeze, uh, with 50% distilled water, and then we'll top it off to the fill line. All right, so right here I have my coolant and distilled water mixture, and then here is what I'm gonna be pouring it in with, a good old Red Solo cup. And then right over here is your coolant reservoir, and then inside, you're not gonna be able to see right now, there is a, a little meter. You just wanna pour it so it barely covers that. And then uh, we'll get in the car, and then we're gonna do a, basically like a coolant flush cycle, and the car is gonna do its thing, and then we're gonna pop it off again, and then do it one more time. All right, so we are in the car now, and in order to start the electronic bleed process, you want to put your air at level one, and you wanna crank the heat up, on both sides to the max which is 84 and then you want to buckle your seat belt and if you have a battery charger you obviously want to plug that in as well and then you want to turn your headlights all the way on the on position and then you want to press and hold the pedal for I think 10 seconds all the way to the floor and then that will start the cycle it actually won't start flowing and running through the hoses until like I think it's like six minutes so don't worry if you don't hear anything I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's been like five minutes and I think it's finally starting to cycle through. All right, so we just bled the system uh, three total times. I think Brian from Keys Motorsports said you can do it too, but I did it three times just for good measure. So we're gonna start up the car, make sure everything is fine, there's no leaks. Uh, we're gonna get it up to operating temperature, make sure everything's running smooth, of course, and then we'll probably go for a little drive, and then I'm gonna make sure I top off the coolant if it's uh, below the meter. All right, it's been about 15 minutes, so we're gonna go cruise around the neighborhood, make sure everything's good. But so far, there's no lights on the dash, and the car sounds like it's idling perfect, so let's go drive around the neighborhood and wrap this one up. All right, so far, so good. Everything seems to be driving just fine, so I would say that's a very successful DIY today. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> BMW just flashed me. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about the install. Definitely something that is both, you know, functional and looks really good in the engine bay. So I'm super happy. Shout out to Active Auto Work. Let's go home and wrap this one up. All right, we're back in the garage right now. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Shout out to Active Auto Work. This is ultimately gonna be part one of BMW Invasion Prep. So expect another video this upcoming Friday. It's gonna be a big, big mod to the engine bay. So stay tuned. Make sure you guys drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below what you guys think. And we'll catch you on the next video, guys. Take care. Peace. Peace.